How's it going guys? I hope you're all doing well out there today, wherever you are in the world. And this video is kind of a follow on from one I did recently about my number one Les Paul. Uh, in it, I spoke about wiring mods that I'd done to it and got asked about more specifics, component values and things like that. So I wanted to cover that, but then it got me thinking about other wiring mods I've done in the past. I'm someone that endlessly tinkers and I'm never happy. So I've, I've experimented a lot. So what I decided to do was put together this list. This is 10 uh, really easy, really cheap, and in my opinion, really useful wiring mods that you can undertake for your particular guitar. Now, I'm not gonna go into specific wiring for each mod. I'll include diagrams where, like simple diagrams where possible, but because each guitar is wired very differently, it would be impossible for me to cover it all. So if you like one of the particular mods, there's so much information out there online, you'll be able to find the particular diagram that applies to you. Certain ones are pretty universal. What I'm also gonna do is where possible, if I've got that particular mod in a current guitar, I will demonstrate the effects of it for you. Now, I don't think you need any in-depth knowledge of electronics to undertake this. These are really simple mods and there's not much danger involved. <laughs> I'm in danger. I would, however, um, familiarize yourself with guitar components and the signal th flow through the guitar from the pickups through the components and out again. It will just allow you to easily understand what's going on and install these. It will let you troubleshoot if anything goes wrong or if you just wanna do general guitar repairs, but it also let you adapt these for your own personal use. If you're unsure at all, please get your local luthier or guitar tech to undertake these for you. Some of these mods are switchable, in which case, if you're happy drilling into your guitar, you can use toggle switches. Toggle switches often afford you a little bit more versatility because you can switch between multiple things like a three position toggle. If you're not a fan of defacing your guitar, you can use either push pull or push push pots. And some of these are able to be variable as well. So you may want to just put them on a pot. We'll go into that as we go along. As for the kit you need to put these together, I highly recommend a good soldering iron and a basic knowledge of soldering. Um, you may need a drill if you're gonna be modifying the actual guitar itself. And then things that you don't need, but I would strongly recommend. Uh, a multimeter is always handy, uh, mainly for continuity. So you can check where the signal's flowing to and it's really easy to troubleshoot. Uh, if you're someone like me, that rather than just reading something online and taking those values as gospel likes to experiment, what I'd recommend is getting big kits of, uh, this is capacitors in here, different values of capacitors that I've selected that are most appropriate for this kind of thing. Um, and then I've got a big old bag of resistors as well. And these things are invaluable. These are little uh, alligator clip patch cables that let you temporarily install things to experiment with different values. Uh, can't recommend getting some of these enough. It's super handy and you can also, again, use these for troubleshooting purposes. So I think that covers all the initial information and disclaimers, so let's get into it. Mod number one on this list is the classic and much used coil split. What this does is it grounds out one of the coils of a humbucker, so you're only hearing one, and it gives you a faux single coil kind of sound out of a humbucker. Uh, this is often wrongly referred to as coil tapping. Coil tapping is where you take a tap from some point during the winds of the pickup, so you can kind of get two voices from it. Um, to do this mod, you will need a humbucker with four conductor wiring. Pickups, unfortunately, don't follow any um, uniformed color coding when it comes to the wiring, so you'll have to look it up on the internet. Often with the four conductor wiring, two of the wires come pre-soldered together to give you the full humbucker where one coil runs into the other. All you need to do is um, to a switch, add those two cables and then add a ground so that as you switch it, it shunts those to your ground and cancels out one of the coils. To demonstrate the sound of this, uh, I'm using my Ibanez and in the down position it's full humbucker and in that position it coil splits this bridge pickup. So this is what it sounds like. So 
So hopefully you can hear that it thins right out, gives you kind of more of a stratty vibe in this instance and uh, doesn't have as much mid content. This is a super easy mod to do and any guitar with four conductor wiring can do it. Mod number two is a partial coil split and I think this one gets overlooked. With a standard split, it's normally on or off uh, with that coil. And what you can do is go to any point in between where you're essentially just reducing the volume of one coil. I first saw this done on a PRS DGT where they actually use resistors to do it. So I've got it written down. They use a 2.2 to ground for the bridge and a 1.1K uh, resistor on the neck to ground. Uh, I, on this guitar, I've taken it one step further and it's actually on a pot, so it's variable. So for the neck pickup of this guitar, by the way, this guitar is an ongoing project. It will be featured in a video soon. So please subscribe if you wanna check that out. Um, so all the way up is full humbucker, all the way down is full coil split, and then I can dial in any amount of that second coil I want in between. So let's have a listen to that now. So that's the two ends of the spectrum and then sweeping between the two. So you can hear it gradually thins out and um, you can really find where you like that kind of uh, single coil-esque sound but still with some balls. Like I say, you can experiment with resistors if you don't want it on a pot, but I think it's a really, really useful mod to look into. Mod number three on this list is series or parallel wiring, and it's kind of a two-in-one because it applies to both humbuckers and single coils. On a humbucker guitar like this for standard wiring, one coil runs into the other and then out, giving you that full humbucker sound. What you can do is send each coil individually to the output, independent, and that gives you kind of a similar sound to coil splitting, but it's slightly weaker output, but does give you the benefit of full hum cancelling. And this is my personal preference over splitting. Uh, now, fortunately on this guitar, I can switch between uh, full humbucker, coil split and parallel. So I can show you the differences, but first this is humbucker to just the parallel wiring. So you get a lot more chime and like I said, it's very similar to that coil split sound, but full hum cancelling, which for someone like me that gigs all the time is perfect. Now I can show you the difference between the split sound and the parallel sound. As you'll hear, it's very similar, but there is some slight nuanced differences. So we'll start off with the coil split. Parallel. So I would say the coil split has a slightly more woody tone, but you have to deal with the noise that comes with it. My personal preference for what I do is the parallel wiring. On a single coil guitar, you can do the opposite. You can run one single coil into another to create a faux humbucker kind of sound. So when you're normally in positions two and four on a Strat style guitar, you'll get the two pickups in parallel, like you would with the parallel mod for the Les Paul. But on this one, you can wire the single coils in series. So I'll show you what that's like. This is them in parallel. And then series. So even in series, they still have that single coil bite, but a lot more beef. Uh, it's a pretty easy mod to do uh, with a couple of toggle switches or a single toggle switch, depending on what you want to do. Or you could even wire it up to certain five-way switches as a permanent sound. Number four is probably my favorite on this list and is certainly my most used, and that is a treble bleed on the volume control. 
If you're someone that when they turn their volume down, your guitar gets unnecessarily woolly and dark and you lose all that high end sparkle, this is the mod for you. Now there's three ways of doing this. Each uh, component way is running across the input and the output of your volume pot. First way is just a standard capacitor. Second way is a capacitor and a resistor in series. And the way that I do it and the way that I prefer is a capacitor and a resistor in parallel. Now the values that I use are, I've just, sorry, I've written it down, is one nanofarad uh, capacitor and a 100K resistor. I experimented a lot with values and these were my favorites for still sounding full, and not overly brittle and not messing with the taper too much. You'll find um, if you add just a capacitor, although it works really well, your volume control behaves very strangely. Uh, the parallel way to me is the best way, but of course your mileage may vary. Uh, I'll just give you a brief demonstration on this guitar. So hopefully you can hear that it retains high end through the whole travel of the pot and it's especially good for when you run into a distorted amp if you get your clean sound by just backing off. Number five on this list is probably the one that got the most attention from the video about this Les Paul. And what it is, is a bass cut control. I've installed a bass cut on the neck pickup of this guitar. As you can see, it's a P90, so I can't coil split it. By adding a bass cut, I can get a single coil like sound out of it, it thins it out a little bit. So it works the opposite way to a standard tone control, which rolls off highs, this rolls off lows. To wire this up, all you do is wire the pickup in series with a capacitor. So when it's off, uh, it runs through the pickup out to the pots as normal. When it's on, the pickup runs through the capacitor and out again. Um, you can change the values of this. The value that I favor for this guitar is 3.3 nanofarads. And I experimented a bit with this. That thins it out quite a bit, but I like it because I often play it with gain and thinning out the bass end gives you a bit more snap. You can change that value either way and use your handy alligator clips like I showed you to test the values as you go. What's good about this is you can also wire it to a pot like a tone control. So what I was thinking about doing with this guitar at some point is actually having a master tone for top end and a master tone for bottom end. There's a good article about that kind of wiring on Guitar World. I think I'll leave a link below. So this is what the bass cut with that value sounds like in this guitar. <laughs> And when you're backing off, you can use that to cut some of the bass and it gives you a much clearer clean sound if you're someone that rides the volume for cleans. Bass cut, highly recommended. Number six is a dedicated kill switch. This gives you that stuttery effect. You can wire it to a toggle switch if you wanna to go Tom Morello or a push button if you wanna go full bucket head. And all you're doing is wiring the ground of your output jack to the hot of your output jack and it just halts the signal completely. Um, if you're gonna use a push button, make sure you get push to make, not push to break. I've got a kill switch wired up to this guitar and it's actually wired up to an old kill pot. I don't think they exist anymore, but it's very cool. It's a pot that you can press for the kill switch sound and it sounds like this. <laughs> Number seven, I unfortunately don't have the ability to show this off, but it's changing the pot values in your guitar. And this shouldn't be overlooked. In Les Pauls as standard, you tend to get 500K volume pots. In Strats, you get 250K volume pots. The 250K volume pots will shave off a bit more high end than the 500, 
all pot values have a load on them. So if you want to make your guitar brighter, change the pot value up. You can even get like 1K volume pots for a lot of high end. Um, I think the old Gibson P90 loaded guitars had 300K pots as standard. I might be wrong about that. Um, you can also change the values of your tone controls. There's loads of resources out there online about how these controls interact and which values may give you the results that you're most looking for. I strongly recommend you check it out if you haven't already. Number eight, sadly, I don't have wired into a guitar at the moment either, but I find it a really useful little mod, and that is adding a blower switch to the guitar. So as mentioned before, pots add loading to uh, your pickups, which shave off, shaves off a bit of high end, potentially output. It's minor, but it's there. What you can do is add an additional switch, which will take your bridge humbucker and bypass all the wiring and take it to the output jack. Now there's videos online that show this and there is certainly a difference between your bridge pickup, all controls at 10 uh, and then out to adding a blower switch. It just gives you a bit more output and a bit more top end. Although this is a cool extra sound anyway, what it's really useful for is if you have your guitar set up a certain way, perhaps rolled off for a clean sound, tone controls, wherever, you can then kick into the chorus, hit your blower switch and your full bore humbucker to output jack and then back without changing any of your controls. I did use this for a while and found it really useful. In fact, talking about it now, I will probably install it on another guitar soon, but it's a really useful mod. Number nine is what's commonly referred to as the Gilmore mod. It's featured on the David Gilmore Strats and it's a switch that allows you to add in the neck pickup on any of the other pickup combinations. So you unlock the neck and bridge together, which gives you a telly type tone or all three pickups on at the same time. This one is super simple on pretty much any strat if you don't mind drilling out for a little toggle switch. There's plenty of info out there online. Just search for the Gilmore wiring mod. Um, this guitar doesn't allow me to do all of the Gilmore positions, but it will allow me to show you the difference between neck and middle together and neck and bridge together. And I think you'll agree there's enough of a difference that it really opens up and that neck and bridge really does cop, cop that kind of telly tone. So down in this position will be neck and middle as normal and up will be neck and bridge. <laughs> With that mod as well, like a lot of these that are switchable, you can also add a pot so you can blend in a little bit of the neck pickup. And there's no reason it could be the neck pickup. You could add it to the middle pickup and get different tones. It just depends on your guitar and what you want to achieve. Finally, number 10 on this list. We made it, yay! Um, number 10 on this list is phase reversal. So when you've got two pickups on at the same time, they're actually out of phase. You get a real hollow kind of honky sound, often referred to as the Peter Green middle selection on a Les Paul. You can do it on any guitar. There's different ways you can make this happen depending on the pickups in your guitar and your wiring situation. I strongly recommend you go online and look for out of phase wiring or how to put pickups out of phase if you want more information. Uh, if you do it the wiring way, you can add a switch to turn it on and off so it's not always out of phase. Brian May's guitar lets you do this. And obviously that you once you've heard it, you can pick out those Brian May solos that have that real hollow kind of tone. Uh, I've done it on this guitar and it was actually an accident and I've just left it there. So this will be an example of that out of phase tone. I'll go from the bridge then to the middle so you hear that out of phase kind of quacky tone. <laughs> So not everyone's cup of tea, but I think it's pretty cool. So that is my 10 favorite cheap and easy mods for guitar wiring. Now, I'm sorry it's been a bit of a long video, but there was a lot to cover and I hope you found it interesting. There's a lot of mods on there that are obviously pretty common, but there's some that are not so common and it just gets the wheels turning for you if there's anything you wanna change about your guitar and the way it sounds. 
Thanks so much for tuning in. As always, please look at liking, subscribing, and commenting if you like what I do, and I really hope to see you in another video. Happy soldering. <laughs>